All right, so a little bit on grip. So first thing is gonna be part of five series, it's position and squeeze. So let's get a little bit higher, a little bit higher on there, and let's get some chest squeeze. So there's rear quarter flank engagement. All right, all right, let's see how this works. Okay, we need to have that nice base, that nice compressed foundation, so it imparts the energy to return the muzzle down to a consistent location. But let's uh, hit some next one in the next episode. Following that chest squeeze, we now have C-clamp, all right, C-clamp. So I'm gonna have emphasis on, on not really bringing the, the, the fingertips in, but just a C-clamp just like this, keep my finger trigger isolated. All right, all right, let's just uh, extend out. Okay, not bad, not great. So um, the C-clamp really helps uh, control that muzzle, uh, hold it in place, and keep isolation of the trigger finger. Okay, the third muscular contraction on grip. We had chest squeeze, we had C-clamp. Now we're gonna do something a little bit different. It's just this pinch, all right? I got a little bit of grip tape here to help out, but I got a pinch. Some people like to use their thumbs to point to uh, the pistol. Well, you have to have some reference. So I'm using this curvature of this surface, and I'm only going the opposing side. I'm not pinching against my other arm. It's just a pinch right within uh, these, these fingers right here. So let's just kind of give this right now. Okay, start putting these together. The group starts just getting a little bit tighter. I'm having more emphasis each time on these muscular contractions. Let's hit the next one in the next episode. All right, talking about grip, we have our, our placement and chest squeeze. We have a C-clamp grip on both sides. We had a little pinch, a little bit different, but something to play with. Next, let's do our subscapular pull. I really got this from Eric Raphael. And um, using primarily the ring finger, I'm C-clamp gripping, but I'm, now they're kind of hooked, and the ring finger and pinky pull in the lower part, all right? Kind of like a weaver stance, really, but again, something to play with. So let's incorporate this into our grip establishment. Yeah, not bad, I had one flyer down below. I was a little bit reactive on that. Uh, but, but it's something to play with as another muscular contraction. And it doesn't really come from your brachial radialis pulling here. It's more from your, your back, your scapula, all right? You're pulling uh, from your shoulder blade a bit more. Something to play with, something to play with. All right, so the fifth muscular contraction on grip is a little bit of elbow roll, a little bit of elbow roll. Now to go over things, we have um, high placement, we have some, C, some chest squeeze, we have some C-clamp grip, we have some pinch, we have some subscapularic pull. I know it seems like a lot, but now we just want to stack on that too, a little bit of elbow roll. We don't want so much elbow roll that we come disengaged in the bottom. We want that rear quarter, quarter flank engagement, even if, even if it's like maybe an eighth. Um, not, not a full quarter, but an eighth. But we don't want to come off, but we want to have a lot more pressure like up here, up in this tang area. All right, so let's give this a little bit, trying to put it all together to get a good performance here. So I'm going to get home and... Okay, that's yeah, pretty tight, pretty tight. The more I put this together, the more emphasis I have, the tighter these, these shots are becoming, all right? So the next one, let's, look, let's work on some rolling emphasis on the next little short episode. Okay, in the previous five episodes, we went over some muscular contractions for grip. That was uh, placement and chest squeeze, high placement and some chest squeeze, some C-clamp grip, not a rope grip, but C-clamp grip, some pinch, a weird one, but one to play with. Then we got some subscapularic pull, and then we got some elbow roll to kind of lock it all in, all right? So now it's not like, okay, how do, we, how, do I, how do I manage this? How do I put this together for a package? Well, you have to do this with live fire. You want to train a lot with your SERP pistol and make sure you're, you're dialed in on this. But when your live fire is when you validate this, what I do is I have a rolling emphasis. I'll do a few shots and I'll emphasize, I'll really emphasize one of those five contractions. So I'm going to start with just emphasizing the chest squeeze. Okay, that was okay, but now I'm going to emphasize the chest squeeze with the pull and a pinch. I'm going to like kind of triple it up. I'm skipping a step, but... It's Instagram, I gotta be fast, right? Okay, not bad, I'm pulling that a little bit left. Now I'm gonna emphasize a little bit more elbow roll. I'm gonna try to hold on to that other stuff I just did and then do elbow roll. All right, all right, uh, not bad. That was actually kind of crappy. Um, but the point being on this is it's, it's, it's shifting your emphasis. Like you try to get emphasized of this feature this one, this one, then this in combination. And then while these are sort of going on autopilot, bring the other one in till you bring a really nice tight um, package together that is bringing that muzzle down. Like the muzzle has no choice but to come down to consistent location as you just drive down those second shots. Okay, it's helpful some time to look at the back of your target, um, particularly when you start taping. I'm seeing a little bit, I'm aiming a little bit low, but also I got a little bit of patterning to the left side. 
and I that could be trigger mechanics. I don't think it is though, because um, I'm doing these drills with the cert. I'm seeing good clean dots, not dashes. I think what's happening is my 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 elbow placement is off a little bit as far as the bend, and my left rear quarter flank engagement is not um, ideal. I am using Winchester white box on this, which is kind of snappy ammo. Um, so it's not like soft loads, okay, as far as getting these results. So what I'm gonna do this time is have a little bit more emphasis on this rear quarter flank engagement so the gun doesn't wanna like, like turn off as much. So I have that good chest squeeze in there. And then also I have a little bit, um, I do a few drills of extending out with my eyes closed and then coming back, standing out with my eyes closed. So I have this, because you're really, even in your isosceles, you're not. Like you're gonna have a different um, bend. It's not like we're perfectly an isosceles triangle. Just by the nature of the support end coming forward, the arms are gonna be different, so you gotta to adapt to that, all right? So let me just relax into this. I'm just gonna watch the sight dance, get all five of those contractions down. Okay. Those results are starting to get dialed in now. I'm feeling good on this. This next episode, I wanna talk about um, a Solomon concept. I'll, I'll talk about it in the next episode. Okay, next little Instagram installment on this is a principle by Solomon. Um, and I can't remember the name right here, but it's, but it's basically when you do two things at once and you're doing the second thing just to drive in the mechanics of the first thing. And to put that in context, I'm just going to run to position. I'm going to run to position, set up my grip, get all five of these muscular contractions, go on with my, with my chest squeeze, my C-clamp, my pinch, my subscapularic pull, and my roll. Okay, I want to lock all those in. But for some reason, when I run to position, it tends to drive that stuff in a subconscious competence. And, and I'm not like sitting there doing it weird. I, just try it. Try it on yourself. But here we go. Here we go. Got kind of a mess here, but I'm going to run up. Boom, I cook them off. I'm gonna kind of run up. <laughs> Ooh, that kind of worked. That didn't work as great as I thought though. Let me try that again, let me try that again. I just want to get aggressive here. Ready, 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 ready. Kind of running. <laughs> okay, I was a little unstable on, on hitting that, but um, that actually felt good. I felt a lot of contraction. I saw the muzzle move around a little bit with the sights, um, but that's going to be the next episode of what this should look like, of how you'd really have not multiple sight pictures, but you have one sight picture. Let's talk about that one next. Okay, so next one's gonna be a little bit weird. We're going to show um, what it looks like. You don't want the muzzle to lift that much. I used to not care about how much muzzle lift as long as it came down to a consistent location. Now I do, because I found when I'm really locked in and that muzzle barely lifts, with a nice quick snappy Glock 19 even, um, I can track that sight the whole way if it, if it lifts like goes this far, this fast, that quick, I can't track it. If it's within that same time frame, it just doesn't move as much, then I can actually track the sight. So it's not, it's not one sight picture, two shots or multiple shots. It's a continuous sight picture, all right? To the point where even if I throw a mic, I can really see it and then make up, uh, do makeup shots, okay? All right, so we're gonna do this just by, go throw this in front, three, two, one, go. Actually, let's try that one more time. Ryan's gonna hold the camera just a little bit lower so it's a little bit more towards sight picture. Okay, ready, ready, ready? captures what you're seeing, what, what I'm seeing. It's basically like it comes up, there's a little bit of wibble wobble, and then the next shot, then a wibble wobble. I don't want much wibble wobble. I want that shot to come down a consistent location. I don't want it to come too high. So I can track that sight coming up, coming right back in, very little. So it's just like do, 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 not where it just gets all motion blurry. It's more just like that. Okay, final message on this series is 
we're looking for good recoil management. That's returning the muzzle down consistently, shot after shot after shot. We also want to have isolation of the trigger finger. That's why we do a C-clamp grip versus a rope grip. You know, try it for yourself. Try a rope grip. Try a C-clamp, okay? Um, but here's the deal. We want, we want good recoil management to be a result of our mechanics. We don't really want to force it. So we almost have to observe it and have a focus and emphasis on some of these five muscular contractions I mentioned in the previous post. And then observe, all right? Uh, it's kind of like speed training, foot speed training, where speed is a result of the mechanics, not so much in just focusing on trying to go fast and get tense and what have you. So just like right now, I'm just going to have a little bit of rationalized apathy. I just don't really care. I'm safe, blah, 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 and all that. But I'm just going to kind of observe and and just basically, basically maybe watch the sight. But other than that, just focus, kind of rolling emphasis on all these muscular contractions. So I just kind of lock it up and... Yeah, I felt pretty kind of good. I got a little bit loose on that. So now I'm just going to keep my relaxed tension where I'm going to kind of try to lock it in a little bit. <sighs> okay, I'm pulling some of those left. That didn't go as well as I'd like, but that's fine. I don't like my self one doesn't judge myself too, too harshly on that. I just try to figure out like, uh, what's going on there? I'm pretty sure what's happening as I'm trying to really, really dial this grip in is my chest squeeze wasn't there. My, my, my elbow location and roll was a little bit weak on that when I just think about like kind of what happened there. So I'm just going ahead and try it again. Okay, so what I observed in that last little, little set I did, eh, I wasn't too pleased with that. I'm not too harsh on myself. I'm like, oh, let me just play with some of these muscular contractions. I'm not going to try. Because when you try too hard, I find myself doing stupid stuff, like, like really inducing a flinch and whatever, bringing some downward force when I hit a dummy round, things like that. It's no good. So I got to be kind of that little bit of rationalized apathy. Oh, yeah, I don't care. Okay, that's pretty good. Got a fresh target up there, blah, blah, blah. We got the camera rolling up front. But instead of being pressured about, oh, can I, can I repeat that again? Um, put it on the camera. Like, no, man. It's just like, I'm just going to kind of continue to observe and have some focus on my mechanics. I might shift a little bit. I might think a little bit about my thumb and my pinch on that, on that lower frame this time and see what happens. Okay. Eh, yeah, it's not bad. Let me kind of finish this magazine. I'm going to working my roll a little bit and while keeping that chest squeeze engagement and, and really hammer down on that C-clamp a little more, a little bit more Vogel craziness like grip on that. <sighs> okay. Uh, not gr Actually, that's better. That's okay because I kind of changed my point and aim up and down, digging around, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, that that's concludes this little series on some ideas on grip. And to think about this, um, yeah, there's no reason why you can't have super, super tight control pairs. I think we got to get away of thinking of control pairs, one sight pitcher, two shots and all that. We just got to really think of like one continuous sight pitcher, grind into your subconscious competence, these muscular contractions, which are all mutually independent from one another. Get a ton of reps with your surf pistol around the house to build that natural point of aim on top of it. And then of course, make sure you have the good trigger control to you know, break that shot without disturbing the muzzle. Even though it's locked down, you can still do a shocking amount of damage with bad trigger control. All right, all right, we're done, good.